Welcome to the Lodge. You've accessed the Lodge Cast Experience. Warning, warning. Dangerous spoilers ahead. Enjoy. Hello and welcome to Hot Takes, Sweltering Hot Takes, Heat Wave Takes. Oh, still in lockdown and we're burning up in Los Angeles. I'm your Lodge Master and with me as always is Brother Bishke. 99 degrees. Brother Lucas with some quarantine hair looking slick as fuck. Ha ha ha. And you know him, you love him, you can't get enough of him. It's Brother Motherfucking Justin in the house. Ooh. Milk was a bad choice. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, we <laughs> we are contending with a little girl named Becky today. Becky. Oh my god. 13 year old. It is a Redbox Entertainment release mm -hmm. <laughs> among eight other or so production companies that all give amazing logos at the beginning. Yeah. Oh my god. There was like a like one was like a lion or something. It was like Lion 8 or something <laughs> or No, Buffalo 8. It was Buffalo 8. With these quarantine movies, we are getting more and more and more production companies before the title on these. It's it's pretty amazing to watch. Yeah, I think eventually I'm just going to see my own name. I'm like, "Wait, I don't remember <laughs> producing this." <laughs> yep, you did it. Becky is, I think, mainly instantly notorious for being a movie in which Kevin James, the King of Queens himself, Paul Blart, Paul Blart, yes, is playing a neo-Nazi escaped convict. So it's a <laughs> bit of a against type from what we're used to with uh, with Kevin James. But I haven't been used to him in any regard, because I've never seen one frame of him doing anything in my yeah, life. Yeah, so. you, could, you couldn't pay me to watch the King of Queens. Uh, uh, yeah, so I've, yeah, not, I've never I seen, zero I've never seen him. I have zero awareness, too. Yeah, yeah. It didn't, the stunt casting didn't really land hard for me. The only clip of King of Queens that I've ever seen is when Patton Oswalt made it apparent that he challenged himself one day to stand completely still oh, yeah, in one that. scene and not do anything. Yeah, that's also the only clip I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing look that up pat and oswalt standing still king of queens should get you there <laughs> yeah i'm happy i'm happy we're all on the same page with kevin james because i i was thinking the exact same thing i'm like i've never seen him in anything so yeah. why not be a nazi yeah exactly so the stunt casting is kind of lost on us but i i get it it also stars in the titular role the girl from two horror origin movies Ouija origin of evil and Annabelle creation. So something hmm. about her makes people want to put her in prequels and to her, horror films. Her parents just are like, go for it. <laughs> right, exactly. And Joel McHale. Mm. Uh, Why? Oh, Why? Why? I, I, Why? I love Joel McHale. And yes. this, this was a mistake. Yeah. Not like this. He's not got like no this. he's got no range. He has uh, he's got no business being in this in a dramatic role. Like yeah. he should play his usual quirky self and leave it at that. Like, don't do this to us, man. But that's that's kind of our cast. Yeah, it feels like it should be more of a satire or comedy with that cast. But they're playing it so straight. Everyone is just there to so straight. Be the so the straight, straight man. So the plot, we're not gonna we're not gonna go through the whole thing because I think a lot of listeners will probably end up seeing this because I mean it's got a good cover, it's got the Kevin James curiosity, and it's called Becky. Like that's a good yeah. title. It kind of reminds you of Mandy or something. Yeah. It should have been called Faster but, Becky Kill Kill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the plot is Becky is missing her mom. Her mom has passed away from cancer. And Joel McHale is her dad, and he's keen on remarrying with his girlfriend, now fiancé, who also has a child. And we intercut kind of developing who they are with Kevin James in prison, kind of inciting a riot that will end up getting him and a few of his cronies out of prison when they break out. 
And it all converges at this lake house, a remote lake house, which all home invasion thrillers will eventually lead to. Yeah, with a, with a kitchen island. And that's that's where kind of all the action goes down. I thought it was off to a good start. I liked the music. It's kind of got a throbbing synth score at the beginning I, when they're... I definitely dug the score, art- yeah. They're artistically intercutting Becky's day at school with Kevin James in prison. A lot of match kind of, cutting on action, yeah, which was great. Yeah, I was like, I was very impressed with, especially a VOD release. It looked like it was storyboarded. And like yeah. anything that <laughs> was on VOD that got storyboarded, I'm like, good job, guys. You I said it. the same thing, Brother Bishke. I definitely noticed yeah. that because you can't plan on those transitions to cut together like butter unless you're absolutely designing it. And I think that's probably how... Yeah the directors uh, sold Kevin James on it. I'm sure they just had it all mapped out. Totally. And the Lodge Mistress was watching it with me, and she's like, this is looking really good, actually. And I'm like, yeah, you're going to stick around? She was kind of on the fence whether or not she was going to stick around. But (laughs) things start to fall apart. The second Joel McHale opens his mouth, (laughs) and the, the ADR, his first line, when they go into a convenience store, I wrote this down because it was so bad. His ADR is, oh, hey, they have meat sticks. Oh, hey, they have meat sticks. <laughs> I instantly was like, uh-oh. I bet he said <laughs> Slim Jims and they had to change it to yeah. not yeah. be brand Good centric. point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Warning sign number two, Becky creeps away from her dad in the store and she walks around the corner, sits down on a curb, and proceeds to watch video on her phone of her and her mom to remember her mom. I'm just like, Really? Yeah, you're, you're sitting down outside a convenience store to have this flashback moment. Like they're just cramming it in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you got you got to get to it. They know we came here to watch Becky kill some Nazis. <laughs> they're, they don't want to waste our time. Right. It was still a, a curious choice, though. But right after that, we cut to the convicts pulling over a dude in his car. He has kids in in the back seat, and they end up killing the dude. And his kids. Yeah. And Lodge Mistress and I, in unison, were like, well, Lucas is out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was pretty dark. That was the No Country for Old Men homage. And the thing is, is like Kevin James is like a pretty big guy, a pretty formidable presence. And they team him up with the the like <laughs> Swedish Norwegian like like giant actor from Game of Thrones who played one of the giants seven feet tall so he's a real person but he's ginormous and he's like a part of this you know so it just makes it even more like unseemly and intense yeah. and his character's name is Apex yeah mm-hmm. which is perfect yeah they go to their lake house Becky and and her dad and her dad's fiance shows up with her kid. And they tell Becky about their intention to be married. And she does not like that. She runs off into the woods, into her rage shack. She has like this little shack. Her little clubhouse. (laughs) Her little clubhouse, her little fort. And she just kind of rages around for a while. Just long enough for Kevin James to show up with his buddies uh, under the auspices of looking for his lost dog. And Joel McHale lets him in and the home has effectively been invaded. So, I mean, we've seen this set up, you know, not these particular details, obviously, but we've seen this a trillion times. This is Home Invasion 101. And I was like, what are they going to bring to this to make it different? They they bring Becky. They bring (laughs) Becky. They bring (laughs) Becky and they bring gore. Oh, God. Did they ever. I would say the genres would be thriller, comma, gore Mm -hmm. yeah i didn't really do any homework but the only little factoid that i read is that this came back from the mpaa with an nc-17 for i believe they had to cut cut a few things i bet i believe it i had to i had to close my eyes at a few points throughout from beginning to end because it was pretty extreme my eyes were wide open But the MacGuffin that Kevin James is seeking is a mystical key <laughs> with a strange symbol on it. I mean, <laughs> oh man, we haven't gotten a MacGuffin like that in a while. Like yeah. that is pure MacGuffinery. That's like straight out of Home Alone three, <laughs> which I never got to part three. But I'll yeah. take your word for he it. He should have just literally said, "This is the key to MacGuffin's treasure. MacGuffin's Nazi gold." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. 
There's four escaped convicts that are at this lake house. Once the key was established, the lodge mistress walked out. She's Oof. like, this is too silly. Yeah. She's like, this is way too silly. And she wasn't wrong. Yeah. But she got out before the blood started really pouring. And <laughs> I have to summon the salad dragon right now. Bring it. Yeah. Was that a Howard Dean scream? <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like it. The Salad Dragon. A scene in a movie that is so bizarre, baffling, or transcendent that it instantly justifies the price of admission. Or Reese Witherspoon's leafy transformation in A Wrinkle in Time. The Howard Dean scream was the Salad Dragon of the 2004 election. (laughs) That was how you used to summon the Salad Dragon. (laughs) So uh, the convicts realize that the way to Becky's heart is through her dad. And uh, they take a s'mores skewer and brand his face with it. (laughs) I know. You know what I thought of? I thought 2020 is become fast becoming the year of like celebrity cameos like John Malkovich or Joel McHale just getting tortured on screen, you know? Right. Oh, oh, it hurts. Oh. (laughs) It must be what people want to see, or they did some study somewhere. Oh, God. But mercifully, Joel McHale cuts his performance short by dying. Uh, he gets shot. So I was happy. I'm like, he needed to get out of the movie. But that pisses off Becky, and it starts off the chain of events that leads to this Salad Dragon, which is <laughs> which is a contender for Salad Dragon of the Year, I think. Yeah, oh, yeah. But oh, yeah, I know what it is. She encounters Kevin James. They have a tussle. She takes the MacGuffin key and jams it into his eyeball. Yeah. Yep. But that's not all, folks. Call now and you get extra leafy greens of this dragon. (laughs) When she stabbed him in the eye, I screamed out loud because I'm a big eye trauma. Uh, You hate eye trauma. We've discovered on the Lodgecast. I didn't really know, but (laughs) over, over the course of many eye trauma films, like... (laughs) <laughs> and and the eye trauma continues when it Kevin continues. James goes inside. His eyeball is hanging out uh, of its socket, and yep. he, he asks one of his buddies to cut the veins uh, ah! of his eyeball. <laughs> and I, I'm struggling. I'm struggling to look. Um, but the guy fails. So Kevin James. Has yeah, to the c- the buddy has trouble with it. Oh, Kevin James has to cut his own eyeball out, and it's just ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, what I noticed, though, is they cut away from the actual point where he slices the vein. So I didn't know if it just looked too silly or fake at that point, because, you know, the movie doesn't hold back anywhere else. So I was I was wondering why they spared us the actual slice. But it was it was effective nonetheless. It's probably one of those things that you can do better in a student film because you just use a real knife because there's no no safety (laughs) person on set. (laughs) Right, right. A real knife and a real eye from a cadaver. Yeah. Yeah. I I know this for a fact because Lodge Master and I made movies in college and routinely used real knives, one of which almost hit me in the eye. So of course I could have played this scene out IRL. <laughs> there are so many alternate realities where you are missing one or both eyes. Just <laughs> yeah, it's great. Too many. I am going to call for a second dragon. Yes. Double dragon. The second dragon is the kill directly after the eye. Totally incident. agree. I can't believe we're on the same wavelength because I, I, as God as my witness, I said with the eyeball, like, this is the salad dragon. And then the first kill, yeah. I was like, no, this is the, 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 the salad dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Becky is tussling with another con out in the woods. She's at her rage fort. And she sharpens a wooden ruler. and The kind we all grew up with. like Yes. And she jumps onto a zip line yeah, but she puts on like a little like hoodie, like a little Pokemon, like I don't know what uh, character hat she was wearing, but it was like it was her just like some some sort of little fuzzy animal. It hat. was her battle headdress. Like she she put it on before she killed the first guy. But she zip lines like straight out of Home Alone. Like she's, she's yes, she's flying through the sky and she lands on the on, on the on the next guy. 
And, and then, she stabs the shit out of Remember in Tropic him. Thunder when Ben Stiller is like getting, you know, chased out of the village and there's that kid just yes. on his back just stabbing him repeatedly? It was exactly yes, like that. This. Like it's, it was exactly but like that. But it, it just, it relishes in the brutality ruler going through the neck just gore oh, and it was, it was almost, so much it was almost as if this sylvester stallone presents becky you know like he was giving them notes from from mm-hmm. last blood yes i was saying this is die hard meets first blood meets last blood meets <laughs> home alone on a tight budget yeah like i think that's what becky is because yeah. they have the walkie talkies and she's kind of taunting them a little bit it's all those things wrapped into one. Do you do you think they would have gotten sued if her character name was Becky McAllister? <laughs> I mean, it's, Probably. it's just a last name, you know? It yeah. would have been amazing had they cast Macaulay Culkin in the Kevin James role, and it was like, you know, a fun, Why wasn't funny, Macaulay fun, funny, funny games kind of moment. Macaulay should have been in this. Yeah, he should have. But gore and carnage and... More booby traps with, with punchy and zooms. And booby traps. All sorts of shit ensue after that. We're not going to go through all of it because, again... Surprise is 90% of it, yeah. Yeah. I think enough people are going to be tantalized either by what we've said already or just by the box cover. So suffice it to say, there's a lot more up its sleeve. There's more boat motor trauma, which I noticed, since we saw We Summoned the Darkness, which... Pretty much only used a boat motor <laughs> in its kills. This this brings that back to much greater effect, I thought. Yeah, yeah. And another point is they utilize what appears to be an authentic Super Soaker 50, which is mm. one of the very mm. first models of Super Soaker from the early 90s that everybody had. And, you know, they could have they used, like, some other knockoff, but this I think this was the actual yellow model with green tank super yeah. so OG. it looked like the 50 yeah OG. that attention to detail was was much appreciated so my main issue with it is that you know there's a reason that we love die hard home alone and at least first blood i don't know if anybody loves last blood it's because we loved all those characters and this one what do we get from becky we get her zoning out in school we get her watching videos of her mom, but what else? Like, I don't know who she is. She's just a fucking psycho kid. Yeah, I mean, the plot is really goofy because it's like these four neo-Nazis and they're just completely foiled by Becky on like a walkie-talkie. <laughs> and to me, I, w- I was laughing quite a bit. Like, yeah, because it felt like a Tyler Perry like version of what... <laughs> like what he would do with this material like yeah just just goofy there's a key there's like this mystical key there's a key. out there it's all about the key it's all about this key they keep referencing <laughs> and they have and, and and um so i don't know i got tyler perry vibes from the drama of it in the movie's defense though kevin james has a pretty great monologue about how he's planned this for years and years and years. This very day, he's planned oh, for 54, it. 54,538 hours he planned this disaster <laughs> that, they, that they did. Yes. And now he's being foiled by Becky, which is pretty, which is pretty great, you know? <laughs> and it's funny to watch him, like, again, yeah, he's a big guy, but, like, watch him be dwarfed giving this monologue in front of a seven foot tall apex behemoth, you know, <laughs> now where, where are you guys funny. on, on this? Because this, this divided my household. I thought okay. Kevin James should have gotten totally ripped for this role. Like sure. Sh- I mean, shredded, <laughs> you know, as, as much as he could, I yeah. thought that would have been much more of an effective, like, holy shit, Kevin James isn't fucking around with this role. I felt that uh, if it was me, if you're making Kevin James like a skinhead Nazi with tattoos, then Becky's got to be, you know, African-American. And and if and if not, then, yeah, then right? Kevin James should honestly be dressed like in a Santa Claus outfit or his UPS uniform from King of Queens. And instead of being like angry and serious, <laughs> he's more jovial and like friendly, you know, except he'll murder you. Yeah, I like that pseudo live rewrite. LT like they should have made a meal out of the racial element because he brings it up. Like Joel McHale's fiance is African American, as is her child, and he comes in and kind of gives a little speech about purebred dogs. 
that's like that's, Ugh, you so know gross. thinly thinly veiled but that shit doesn't really go anywhere you know yeah he, it's just it's just he's evil. He's just like shorthand for e- cartoonish evil villain. So we don't care that he gets tortured or killed. But it never dials in. Well, once you establish that someone's a neo-Nazi and was in prison, presumably for neo-Nazi shenanigans, what? <laughs> I, how much do you need to go into that? Like, that's a way to just get shorthand for bad guy. But if Becky, if there was some like added like fuck you and your skinhead self from Becky... Becky's as white as the as the driven snow. Like she doesn't, it, it never even comes up for her. Like that would have been an added element. As it is, they just kind of, I mean, you know, dangle it, and then that's it. Coming back to the key, like <laughs> if you remember the very <laughs> early scenes in the movie, like Becky and then and Kevin James are kind of blended together, like they're similar, and then we get yes. come back to this key, which is kind of. In my interpretation, it's the, it's the heart of violence within all men and thirteen year old girls, and um, <laughs> <laughs> I love it, love it. And so, if we want to interpret the key, there's like there's similarities between Becky and the neo Nazi. I don't know. Sure, I guess I guess that's the way they went. <laughs> I like that interpretation. Yeah. That makes me like the movie more. I I think this is this is part one in a three part fantasy series where yeah. Becky and her magical key are going to go on adventures in other realms in part <laughs> Blood-soaked 2. Blood-soaked adventures. This is just yeah. a this is yeah. just a really grounded and gory prologue for further adventures. Yeah, I could see there being a Becky trilogy. I mean, why not? <laughs> what else? We got nothing else going on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to them Becky Bones. Who do we start with here? Brother Lucas, I don't know where you're coming from. What, what do you got going on? Yeah, this was a perfect stay at home VOD uh, late night uh, after dinner movie. And uh, I appreciated, yeah, the fast paced and the transitions and the score. Like it definitely was like a spoonful of sugar helping the medicine go down. And uh, the violence was a little too extreme for my taste. Like it definitely got dark. Uh, I see a lot of misogyny, a lot of violence against women, a lot of violence against children. Uh, and yes, Becky is a child who who gives violence right back, which which is this whole set of like other issues. So it's a definitely like hashtag problematic movie uh, in today's <laughs> world, in today's climate. But like one of the things that I thought didn't work was how they framed the movie, and and then and the prologue, the cold opening, kind of oh, just yeah. gives away that like she's obviously going to survive what we're about to see yeah. unfold. So you're never worried or in doubt. Why do all movies and TV shows think they need to start yeah. with an, a police interrogation and then a and then a flashback? That doesn't help anymore. At the no, very no. least, I would have started, yeah, with some, with like maybe the the small the small son like giving the interview, so you don't know if he's like the only one who made it out until the very end. The little boy has no lines. Yeah, and he's great. He <laughs> was great boy sitting there. Anything. His eyes were his eyes were very pretty. Um, but yeah, I give this two and a half bones. This this is not something I'm recommending Whoa. to anybody, but it, it rises above like the the two bone threshold just on the sole sheer double dragon of the salad dragon of it all because it just definitely yeah. shocked me to no end two and a half from lt wow brother bishki what do you got going on uh i had i had a surprisingly good time i wasn't not, um expecting much i thought there was a lot of uh hilarious details in there that we didn't haven't touched upon but the but there's a lot of twists and turns there's a lot of bold choices, you know. That, like, oh, yeah. Compared to um, We Summon the Darkness, which was a one-location shoot and didn't take any <laughs> chances for some reason. Right. This one was, like, just, yeah. It was really every every few minutes there was some new fresh kill or something coming around that you, you would look forward to. I thought if you can stomach them, Oh, I thought all the kills were salad dragons, basically. Um, they kind of were, yeah. Yeah, there's there's one kill in particular which we shouldn't really talk about, but I was like, oh wow, like oh, wow, yeah. I mean, my st- I was nauseated by the end, but I but I took yeah. you get kind of used to it. But yeah. uh, out of context, if you show any of these kills to anyone, their their minds are going to be pretty blown. Yeah, yeah. But I laughed a lot throughout. I liked the 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 actress who played Becky. She she had a lot of funny. Um, 
like the way she ran and different different little details about her. I was yeah. Just laughing I think she's at. great. Even in yeah. those horror prequels, I thought she did great work. So yeah, she's so, one to watch. So it, it's probably two bones, but it really took me out of this world we're living in right now and uh, gets a bump. Like like uh, most Tyler Perry movies, I'm gonna give it two and a half bones. Two and a half from Bishki. I think it's empowering for 13 year old girls. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> encourages them to go uh, take matters into their own hands and slaughter their enemies. Yes, brother Justin, what do you got going on? Well, first of all, I formally owe Redbox an apology because that was the first <laughs> logo we saw. And my response was just, oh, boy. And yeah. by the time the credits rolled, I'm like, how do I get a hold of Redbox? Get me in a room with these guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought this movie exceeded expectations. Um, I thought it was well shot, well edited. Um, it was crafted in a very thoughtful way, like very meticulous way, especially for what it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I thought it was fun, despite having a few logic problems here and there with, I think, I think you get around those logic problems by just saying, well, sh you know, she's 13. What are you going to do? She's right. not a trained Marine. Um, <laughs> yet. Yeah, yet. But yeah, and it, it overcame a few kind of like dips that usually hurt your soul in movies with kids dying and, <clears throat> spoiler alert, a dog Dogs dying. Dogs dying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which, Ugh. if you recover from that, uh, good on ya. you. You <laughs> managed to still make a movie fun despite having those things. Uh, right, right. So, yeah, I mean, screw it. I'm giving this movie three bones. <laughs> fun was nice. had by Three all. bones. Three bones from Brother Justin. I, I love I, it. I got to say, you know, some of us adhere to the, the Old Testament bone <laughs> system, so... The, the one bone, of us said here's yeah, the the bone system will never change but i i long for one more bone oh I, you want you want five bones i want five <laughs> bones because I, so many movies for me get caught in this two to two and a half rut i see i see that that just yeah. feel like i'm giving everything a c minus c plus when i don't think that's really the case i think you know when a small movie like this ends up being fun and I think kind of almost getting that cult classic status instantly, that's a big win for me. So yeah, I'm definitely standing by my my three bones. Well, we'll we'll take your five bone initiative under advisement with the powers that be. I make no promises, but I I think you got a good case. So yeah, I, I don't want to anger anyone at the regulatory and the and the committee. I mean, so. you're dealing you're dealing with some some pretty serious uh, power players here when you start talking bone expansion. But <laughs> I'll try to be I'll try to be your champion and and put that in front of the proper star chamber. So we can get a good hearing. Hey, it's it's why the Constitution has amendments, you know. That's Even true. The, the greatest of documents, aka the, <laughs> the video hound guide, might need <laughs> right. an amendment here and there. <laughs> uh, all right, so that's three bones from Justin. I was a fan of the editing as well. I was a fan of of a lot of the the shots and a lot of the sequences that obviously a lot of thought went into. I was a fan of the score. But the the demerits for me, Joel McHale, come on, man, that's that's a tough one for me. And just the script, the script was a little too threadbare for my taste. Like this could have been really, really impactful if they did a little more heavy lifting and a couple more passes with with some of these characters. I can't help but hold against it the movie that it almost was. And sometimes that's not fair, but this time I, I got to give it two. I got to give it two bones. I was, I was, I was wanting to go up to two and a half. I think memory, the, the memory of watching it will be a two and a half bone memory, but I think the movie itself is two and I got to stick with that. So when you're, when you're sitting in front of a gas station, listening to this <laughs> you'll remember yes. it as a two and a half bone movie yes, eating exactly. your gummy worms yeah but i'm like i miss my boys i gotta i gotta listen to this episode i know the feeling oh, that'll be a two and a half bone memory for sure but uh two two bones for me not often that i'm on the lowest end 
of the bone spectrum, but uh, it's kind of nice down here. It's at least cool. You've earned it. <laughs> I think I think it, I think it's a movie that that most of our listeners should probably go check out. Um, there's 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 plenty of salad, leafy salad nutrients. In it, it would be a cool double feature with like Grown Ups or one of Kevin James's Adam Sandler comedies. <laughs> yes. Just a whiplash, yeah, just complete whiplash, tonal disparity feature. that just makes you question everything. I love it. Well, that's Becky, boys. Becky. We did it. That's the Becky hot take, Becky. y'all. Love, All and right. light. love and light, everyone. <laughs> love and love light. light, love and light, love, love and light, light y'all. Oh.